Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we have more information on the Tesla bot. Tesla has posted another set of job openings for the Tesla bot. Then we've also got an update on a story we covered a couple years back about a burned Model X. We've got some new information on GM's Chevy Bolt recall, a feature update, and some news on batteries. Thanks for all the feedback in yesterday's episode. It looks like most people are more in favor of me keeping the stock price update, so I'll do that for the time being. I'm still going to ponder it, but for now, we'll keep with it. So the stock was up about two-thirds of a percent today to $735.72. That did compare to the NASDAQ, which was about flat on the day. All right, so first up here, we've got new job listings for the Tesla bot from Tesla. You may remember that shortly after AI Day, Tesla posted four different job listings. That is now pretty significantly increased across the searches for Tesla bot or for humanoid, total of 15 different positions currently listed. Most of them are full-time positions in Palo Alto, but it does look like there are three internships as well. And then one listed for Austin, Texas, interestingly enough, for a test engineer for the Tesla bot. I'll read a part of that job description here. The last sentence kind of caught my eye. So it says, quote, the test engineer will develop test processes, data infrastructure, test equipment, and automated test scripts that will accelerate the production of mobile robotic systems. In addition, the test engineer will be tasked with understanding ways the system can fail, designing tests to validate, and driving improvements with the design teams to address these issues. Due to variation in the robots produced, the test systems is a particularly challenging and dynamic area of the program." End quote. So this Austin position, primarily about testing production, could suggest that maybe Tesla has GigaTexas in mind for future production of the Tesla bot. And then you've also got that last sentence in there about variation in the robots produced. That sounds a little bit different than what Tesla talked about at AI Day. They kind of presented this one form factor and it seemed like they'd just produce a lot of those. So you wouldn't necessarily think much variation involved in what Tesla had previously announced. But another job description might give us a hint at this. A few of them mention this, but specifically we'll look at the autonomy job listing for the Tesla bot, which says that, quote, Tesla's mobile robotics team designs and builds humanoid bipedal robots, Tesla bot, to automate repetitive tasks and wheeled robots for manufacturing and autonomous logistics, end quote. So Tesla seems to be thinking about more than just a bipedal form factor on their Tesla bots. Probably not all that surprising given the comments that Elon made about, hey, we've got all the technology, why would we not put it in other form factors? Sounds like the bipedal would just be one of those form factors and Tesla may be thinking about a wheeled form factor as well. Now by itself, that may not be all that interesting. Obviously there are already robots that work in warehouses and things like that, that have some level of autonomous capabilities. But what's interesting here to me is the combination of the two. So mentioning wheeled robots, and then for the test systems position, mentioning variation in robots. And with test systems being about production, it seems like Tesla would have high volume plans for multiple products. I also think the mention of autonomous logistics in there is pretty interesting. Obviously logistics is potentially a huge category for Tesla with the Tesla Semi, especially as Tesla further develops autonomy. But then of course you have the last mile and the last foot delivery challenges which could have been a potentially good use case for the bipedal Tesla bot, but it looks like Tesla might have a more specialized approach in mind for those areas. It's going to take a long time, but it's clear that Tesla is seriously interested in this space, and it's going to be extremely interesting to follow the developments on this front. We'll continue to keep an eye on these job listings. Next, we've got an update on a mysterious story that we had covered back in February of 2019 involving a Model X that had been found out on a frozen lake and burned all the way down to its frame. Unsurprisingly, the mysterious nature of this, the fire with an electric vehicle, specifically a Tesla, this received a lot of media attention at the time, but details were very sparse. The police report had suggested that the vehicle had hit a rock or something that had punctured the battery, caused the fire, and that was pretty much all the information that was available. Well, we now have an update on that case. So the U.S. Attorney's Office in Vermont has indicted a man by the name of Michael Gonzalez for stealing five Teslas worth about $600,000. This was done with fraudulent purchases, so paying the initial deposit, receiving the vehicle, and then the funds actually never transferred over to Tesla for the full balance. And in the meantime, Gonzalez would then sell the vehicles. Not sure why this was not able to be found sooner. There must have been something in there to make that not extremely obvious, but apparently not enough as he is now facing charges for this. Anyway, that Model X that was found on that lake, that was one of these vehicles. In that case, he had not received the necessary paperwork to be able to resell the vehicle. So then I'm sure very coincidentally, this fire happens, he files an insurance claim, and that insurance claim is actually denied. So it's disappointing to hear of things like this going on, but this is where a lot of that skepticism comes from when we see these reports on Tesla about accidents, or fires, or whatever else. There have been many reports over the years where those initial details are just not telling the whole story. 
So in general, just a good idea to wait until all those details are in hand as best as possible. I guess sticking with the theme then, we've got some updates on the Chevy Bolt recall. Of course, we talked previously about GM extending this recall to all Chevy Bolts. They expect the cost to be about $1.8 billion. And while GM and LG have learned that the defects are from a torn anode tab and a folded separator in the battery modules, they are still investigating the exact nature of these problems. While that is going on, GM has halted new production and they're also not doing any repairs yet. A GM spokesman told the Detroit Free Press, quote, if we took the battery stock that's in the field right now or at a warehouse, we're not confident that it is defect free. Because we are not confident that LG has the capability to build defect free products, we put the repairs on hold and we are not building new bolts. We're not going to start recall repairs or start building new bolts until we're confident LG will build defect free products, end quote. So clearly GM putting a lot of blame and public pressure on LG here. Obviously the companies right now would be engaged in negotiations for how to handle the costs of this recall. And I think the public comments here from GM just show how little involvement they probably had in the battery the modules, the pack, and even maybe the battery management software, because all those things work together to make sure a battery is safe. It's not just the cell or the pouch, it's all of it combined. That's what a lot of people have had a hard time understanding about with Tesla is, oh, they're just taking these battery cells from suppliers and putting them in cars. Well, no, Tesla's owning a lot more of it than just that. So hopefully GM and LG get this figured out. They are both working together on the next generation platform for GM, the Altium batteries. I think certainly the companies will continue to work together, but I would imagine this will put pressure on both sides just to double down and do a lot more testing, probably cause them to move a little bit slower together. And I would be very surprised if this doesn't give a stronger voice to those within GM, whether it's on the board or in the C-suite or wherever, that are more conservative, less aggressive, this situation will definitely bolster their view and make it harder for GM to move forward quickly. GM might expect that the recall cost them $1.8 billion, but there are a heck of a lot more costs here to consider than just the financial cost. All right, moving on then, next here we have an update on a possible feature. Elon responding to a question on Twitter, which read, quote, Elon, is it worth the engineering time to make the proximity sensor chimes be directionally projected from corresponding speakers in the cabin and with volume relative to distance? Seems we could do better than chimes too, end quote. Elon replying to that saying, good point, agreed. So right now those proximity chimes will intensify as you get closer, but it's not a smooth intensification. It's more of a step change and no directionality as pointed out here. I think it's raised in a fair way of, okay, is this actually worth the engineering time? As hopefully generally you've got an awareness of which direction the thing that you're getting close to is in, but perhaps it's helpful in certain circumstances and it looks like maybe we'll see that in the future. All right, lastly here, we've got a report on batteries. This is from 36KR via Pan Daily, and the report says that Tesla is, quote, now looking for a 4680 cylindrical battery provider in China. The EV maker is in negotiation with its current battery supplier, CATL and LG Chem, and several other major cylindrical battery companies, including EVE Energy Company and BAK Battery, end quote. So this seemed to get a decent amount of attention today, but this shouldn't be very surprising at all. We already knew about CATL and LG working on 4680s, so maybe EVE and BAK would be new here, but we actually had a report that we covered back in May about Tesla potentially working with EVE. At that point, it was for lithium iron phosphate batteries, but a couple days after that, as we also talked about, EVE came out and denied that, saying that they hadn't had any business communications with Tesla about the batteries. So who knows, maybe there was something there, or maybe it was leaked to try to pump the stock or something, but EVE is a pretty small player, as we talked about, at the time. So not anything I'm super interested in, but again, just because it was covered today, felt like I should comment on it. But really that is it for today. So as always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Wednesday, September 1st episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.